Welcome, Welcome to Australian Mysteries. Mysteries. Hello, I'm Blake. And I'm Shannon. So, what have you got for us today? I have got an art heist. Oh, now this is the one actually. I'm gonna, I can't really act too surprised because I have seen clues of this around the house. Yeah, but you don't know the details. No, I don't know the details, yeah. but I have been seeing a lot of clues around the house. So, let's see how much of this case surprises me. Yeah, well, let's see. You have to get see. sneakier. I have to be sneakier. To get sneakier. I'll, um, yeah. I'll figure out a way to be sneaky. <laughs> yep. <laughs> In December 1985, the National Gallery of Victoria purchased for $1.6 million a Pablo Picasso painting. It was Bargain! One, it was one of a series of four paintings, all known as The Weeping Woman. I don't know oh, if okay. you've heard yes, of that series. Yes, I know. Oh, yes, I know. It's so famous. It's it was, so famous. It was nearly a year later that the painting was stolen from the gallery. It is an oil on canvas. 55 centimeters by 46 centimeters, and was painted by Picasso on the 18th of October 1937. To date, it is the highest price paid by a major gallery in Australia. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm about to speak. Mm. Just neat enough to tuck under your arm and carry it. Yeah, you could just walk out with it. No one just You could just walk around with it, like almost like Leonardo da Vinci used to do with his uh, Mona Lisa. On Saturday the 2nd of August 1986, sometime after closing, the painting was unscrewed from its wall mounting and the canvas was removed from its frame. And the thief or thieves... So they rolled it up? ...left the gallery undetected, ditching the frame inside the gallery. Um, no, they don't need this. No, they didn't roll it up. They, it's actually, they kept the canvas and it was on a, um, still on a wooden frame that had stretched out the canvas. Oh, okay. So it was still just in its little Oh, so they space. kept the... the Okay, they kept the camp like the stretchy frame, but they didn't keep the gilded frame. Yeah, they kept the stretchy frame. Yeah, the actual like proper like gilded frame. They just took off and ditched. Well, they ditched on a shelf somewhere in the gallery. Patrick McCacky, who was the director of the gallery, said that there must have been a specialized type of screwdriver, one that is not available to the public use. So they used. So when they fixed it to the wall, it was with. Apparently, it would have been extremely hard to remove the painting mm -hmm. off the wall. The theft, unbelievably, was not noticed till Monday the 4th of August. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is that two days? Pretty much. Two full days? Of two like... full days. Oh, by the way, days. we're missing the most expensive painting in Australia. Yeah, it's gone. Took us two days to... to... No, I suppose, like, you just wouldn't expect someone to steal. <laughs> Especially if you use special screws. <laughs> Apparently. Couldn't expect that. Well, it was still open, so people... I think it was open on the Sunday too, so people were in there, walking around. Ooh. Yeah, this is, this is why. Um, this was due to the fact that there was a card left on the wall where the painting used to be. It simply read, simply read um, remove for routine maintenance with letters ACT underneath. The staff... <laughs> The staff had assumed it stood for the Australian Capital Territory. <laughs> Everyone was taken to the ACT. <laughs> so I they... love these these themes. <laughs> they have good sense of humour. Oh, they're amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, everyone, <laughs> everyone was lost, and no one had any idea who stole it and why. What's ACT stand for? <laughs> the whole cat territory came in and nicked up it. Still the camera. <laughs> Damn it. Camera is um, struck again. Some people believed it was a prank, others thought it was an inside job, and also the painting itself was not insured. Oh no. I'm almost crying. See? They're probably waiting for it. <laughs> They're probably waiting for another couple of months of um, ticket sales so they can yeah, insure they're sure, it. Sure it, we'll insure it once we once we make a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, damn. Um, the Age, which is the newspaper in um, Melbourne, mm -hmm. and um, the Minister of Arts, Race Matthews, both received, um, received a letter on the morning of the Monday as well. Um, Have you noticed it? Like, are you <laughs> going to sound the alarms? It was a ransom letter, actually, and I can read that oh. whole letter for you as well because it was fully released. Oh, so they ransomed the painting. Attention, Rank Matthews, MLA. We have stolen the Picasso from the National Gallery as a protest against the niggardly funding of the fine arts in this hick state and against the clumsy, unimaginative stupidity of the administration and distribution of that funding. 
Oh dang, okay. It's inside job. Someone's really angry. Okay, continue. Two conditions must be publicly agreed Ooh. upon if the painting is to be returned. Conditions. One, the minister must announce a commitment to increasing the funding of the arts by 10% in real terms over the next three years and must agree to appoint an independent committee to inquire into the mechanics of the funding of the arts with a view to releasing money from its administration and making it available to artists. Two. <laughs> yes! Continue. The Ministry must announce a new annual prize for painting open to artists under 30 years of age. Five prizes of $5,000 are to be rewarded. A fund is to be established to ensure that the real value of the prizes is maintained each year. The prize is to be called the Picasso Ransom. Because the Minister of the Arts is also Minister of Plot, we are allowing him a sporting seven days in which to try to have us arrested while he deliberates. There will be no negotiation. At the end of seven days, if our demands have not been met and our campaign continue, your very humble servants, Australian cultural terrorists. In other words, an artist under 30 years old, he's been, he's got the, the hump because there's not enough funding for the arts. There isn't, by the way, I agree. Oh no, I'm under 30 years old. Maybe it was me! Maybe <laughs> it's just a long time ago, guys. I understand that. And that's what the ACT stands for. Uh, hilarious! <laughs> oh, it's so good! I know. However, there's this young person, well, young team of people, maybe, I'd say a group. Yeah. Maybe five since I asked for five prizes. Right? <laughs> under just, thirty. Just following me here. Under thirty, five people. They've got this painting. Probably they've got it in a studio or apartment somewhere. Yeah. And they're like, oh, dang, they haven't noticed. It's Monday. Alright, what we're gonna do? We're gonna write this. We're gonna write this angry letter and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be a good letter. We'll write this angry letter, we'll send it to two people. And we just, now we wait, and they're sitting there in the studio apartment looking at this painting that they've nicked with this with their special screwdriver sitting next to it, and they're like, "Gee, I hope it works." <laughs> uh, the Australian cultural terrorist sent another letter to. It described um, Matthews as a tiresome old bag of swamp gas. It also stated, "If our demands are not met, you will begin the long process of carrying about you the smell of kerosene and burning canvas." Good luck with your huffing and puffing, Minister, you pompous fathead. That letter was dated August 9th. Ooh, scathing. Did he make any, like, did he make some recent cuts to funding? I don't know, I haven't actually I looked don't know. up. I don't really follow might... politics. They Maybe. must have. Because I've just given well, up on them, honestly, right now. <laughs> well, the interesting thing back then is this Minister was the Minister of Arts and the Minister of the Police. Oh, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. What an interesting combination. So, I obviously, the, yeah, okay. So obviously, I can see why, yeah, they'd be like, are you ever taking this seriously since you're splitting the job between two sectors? Yeah, and mm. you, pro you probably could have been focusing on the police. I, I'm not 100% sure. However, I it sounds like somebody has been quite angry, angered about it. Oh, artists are always angry. <laughs> <laughs> A third letter was received two days later it was sent to the minister's office and it contained a burnt match with the words, thank you for your support, phase two begins shortly. Oh gee. Police were searching galleries, both private and public, and were chasing down many police sketches of people seen in the area at the time, which proved futile. They have scoured the um, gallery because they still believed it was hidden in there. Why would it be hidden in the gallery? I don't know. They believed it. They even drained, they, um, the National Gallery of Victoria is surrounded by a little um, moat. Mm. They drained out the moat to see if it was in the water as well. Like, they were checking everything. Okay. Um, there was even a re reward of $50,000 for any information leading to the capture. So they're sort of threatening that they've burnt the painting or are going to burn the painting. They're threatening they're going to burn the painting if their demands are not met. Mm. Part of me is like, no, no artist would burn a Picasso. And then the inside <laughs> me is like, yeah, they all probably would. They probably would. They probably would. Yeah, no. Okay. Ooh. Many people had lost all hope. It wasn't until the 19th of August that police received an anonymous phone call. The male voice said if they go to Spencer Street Station, they will find the weeping woman in locker 227. Oh, we're getting like old school detective -y, like yeah. old school Ooh, spy yeah. stuff now. Yeah. The painting was found in the locker wrapped carefully in brown paper with a string tied around it. 
There was a fourth letter inside as well, which the contents haven't been unveiled to the public, except for an extract printed in the age. It was, quote, Of course we never looked to have our demands met. Our intention was always to bring to the public attention the plight of a group which lacks any of the legitimate means of blackmailing governments. The painting was undamaged and it was still in its canvas, canvas stretcher. There were two women that had been seen near the lockers, each with a brown parcel. There was a sketch drawn of at least one, and I've seen that, but it, she was never identified. So, yeah, they would definitely believe it's a group since there was a male phone call, there was a woman that had a parcel around that area. Patrick uh, McCackie, who was the um, director, um, he wrote in his memoir that a few days before the painting was recovered, he received a call from a Melbourne art dealer he said he knew of a young artist who may have some information. Yeah. He met with the artist at the artist's studio and asked him if he knew anything about the painting at all. No, no. The no. Well, the artist, yeah, he said he didn't know anything <laughs> about the Weeping Woman, which was weird since Makaki noticed there were newspaper clippings of the Weeping Woman all plastered around he the studio. He was studios. obviously one of the five. I'm saying it's five people. <clears throat> he quoted that. Um, this is Patrick McCackey. Um, he quoted that, I said deliberately, at least twice, that the people who had taken the work could deposit it in a luggage locker at Spencer Street Railway Station or at the Tullamarine Airport. He said, it was roughly within 48 hours that the painting was put in Spencer Street Station. See, so they got it in their studio apartment. They're like, oh damn, okay, what are we actually going to do with this? Like, the fun, and fun is over now. What are we going to do with this painting? It's, it's, it's not a huge, tight, huge painting, but a pretty sizable painting. It's taken up a lot of space in our studio apartment in a hole in the wall. <laughs> what are we going to do with this dang painting? And they're like, oh, well, we're starting to sweat now. <laughs> One of them sort of accidentally mentions a little bit to his art, art dealer slash art collector friend. Oh, and he goes, are you absolutely joking? You're, he's like, don't tell me. Don't, don't finish that sentence. And then he's gone, okay, well, you know what? I'll figure this out. He gets onto the... the slightly like helpful connection his yeah gives him the name of one who's obviously far removed they would have like taken the art out of that person's apartment for sure accidentally left the newspaper clippings out but you know obviously they're probably frazzled by now they get the painting they gotta get rid mm. of i'm thinking we're looking for five artists under 30 obviously you said young artists one of them is the one who said, oh, I know nothing at all. Meanwhile, it has clippings everywhere. It's obviously he's one well, of them. The thing, oh, what are you doing? And, 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 don't interrupt me. Don't anger the artist. Ooh. And, um, I'd say they're going, they have been enrolled in or have recently graduated or a sort of part of the group are still enrolled in a art school nearby. Yep. They should be looking at art schools for people who match the description to women and this guy he I'd say maybe check the art schools he went to because you know there's a lot of talk like that's where you network that's where you meet all your mm. <laughs> that's where you meet all your people who you're gonna go rob galleries with at art school because it's where the radicalness happens <laughs> so that's I reckon I reckon if we looked through all those records I think we'd find some some potential suspects but you know what? I don't ever want to know who it is. I hope they got. It. I hope they continue to get away with it for the rest of if they're still alive. Well, the interesting thing is, I did read a news article. I didn't write it down, but the actual artist's name was in the article. Mm, there you go. He's definitely one of them. So He's they, definitely they wrote, they wrote the name in the article. So I didn't want to mention it, but yeah, they did. Like there wasn't a secret. Um, the police did close the case in 1989, and um, they consider it yeah uh, pretty much a cold case, but it's closed. Well, like it's not officially painting was returned. No harm done. Yeah, and they said the not minister was called a few big rude names, but yeah. maybe he deserved it. I don't know. He deserved it. Maybe. Who knows? Definitely. I love people. how they changed. I love how they changed his name. Like his name was Race Matthews, and in the letter they write Rank Matthews. I was like, that's just that's so, <laughs> it's so, such a, it's so adorable. I was like, what? Yes. <laughs> You get him, you I roast him. Had, I had a good chuckle at that one. I, I love the fact that we surround it. Was it followed by the smell of kerosene and burning canvas? Yeah, look forward to huffing and puffing, you pompous fat. <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. I'm going to write all these out and put them on, a, on my wall. This you is, should, this you is should. fantastic. You I should. like this. It is, it is insane. Good job if you're out there watching this. You might, you might not be. We're not no, you might famous. Do. However, Good job. Good job. I am in awe of you. That was, that was good. We do. I agree. We need more funding for the arts. 
and it needs to be seen as less of a joke and more of like a, an actual asset to humanity. However, probably no one's going to realise that until it's too late. Oh. I think it was an inside job because um, it was done like the, it was closed and apparently a register's card was used. Yeah. But you don't have to be an employee to get into a gallery. They could be volunteering. Okay. And they let you into a lot of places as a volunteer. Okay. Especially if you like are interested in the arts that you show like you know and you're there a lot of the time. You're offering a lot of your time for it. And it's good to get the experience as well. They let you into a lot of places. Mm. You see a lot of stuff, like a lot of behind the scene art things, which is fantastic. I would highly recommend find your local gallery and volunteer. Not so you can steal a Picasso, but because it's just podcast. an excellent experience. Just do it, but I'd say that's exactly I reckon don't, don't we got just a small do group. We got a small group. That fellow that they that they were tipped off onto, definitely part of it. The art dealer knew about it. I don't think he was involved though. I think the fact that he was like, oh, look, I'm gonna have to sort this out. He sounds like a sort of, he sounds like a, yeah, sounds like a classic art collector. The thick about do you, business. Do you think the director of the National Gallery was involved? No, I think he liked it though. Yeah, apparently yeah. did like it yeah. a lot. I think I'm feeling that he liked it. Yeah, um, he loved. I think he loved the whole the theatrics of it. I, the fact it was God. I think he would have had an inkling on who did it. Yeah. He would have known some of the volunteers there, perhaps some of the more prominent ones. He might have even let them have a few more like freedom in the gallery itself if they're there all the time or mm. proving themselves. I think we're looking for. I think we're looking <laughs> for a group of five okay. people. A group of five people. Small, but not too small. Like it's a good group. So plus, five people. They plus they asked for five prizes. Um, Picasso ranch. One is definitely the fellow that was tipped off who had the clippings there, but not the painting. They might have even used his studio or his place as a storage place for the painting. I think that's probably where it went straight away. Two women who were seen outside the thing at the near the place at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I think they're both involved. For two people to be walking around with brown parcels, I think mum was a decoy. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I think those two would have been the ones, at least those two would have been the ones that were volunteering at the gallery. Yeah. Every gallery loves a front desk girl, and your front desk girl, you get to know a lot about what's going on in the gallery because you have to know. You're, trying, you're, you're there as the face of the gallery, yeah. volunteer or not, to explain to the people what's going on, what's new, what's not. I think one of them would have been, I think both of those girls probably were into it, and maybe some of the other people in this group as well would have been in the gallery helping, but I think those two definitely would have been, you know, they know the gallery, <laughs> they know the ins and outs, they know how to get in, they know how to get out, they know how to get through the back door, the front door, they know where it is, they know where the fixings are, they know what kind of screwdriver you need. Obviously, they were working there, either paid or not paid. If they're volunteers, your name kind of doesn't go on a roster. It doesn't go on a payslip, so you kind of well, pretty well, you know, you can write your name on your book, whatever name you want, whatever. <laughs> and then I reckon we've got two others who were helping, probably driving, getaway vehicles, etc., or just helping, just helping out. Oh, that sounds like a proper heist. Oh yeah, they would have done it properly. Come on, we do things properly. <laughs> I'm thinking we're looking for a group of five people. Yeah. Three, we kind of already almost know the identity of two would have just been, would have been helpers. They might not even been artists, these last two, they might have just been dragged in helpful people that are happy to help. I love the fact that this guy was like, look, if, if somebody who had the painting put it in this little deposit box, yeah. uh, no one would ever know. And they were like, oh yes, they won't know. If, 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 if they put it in this place. Or this, this is place. our ticket out. Yeah. <laughs> Stick it out of stress. It's good that, it, I mean, it's good that it came back. I kind of, imagine if it didn't though. Oh, oh. You'd be have someone's little studio apartment somewhere. With this, yeah, you hope it would still be in Australia. That would be cool. Oh, oh yeah, be like I a treasure be... hunt to find Picasso. Yeah, yeah, I guess Whoa, it would. Oh, that would be cool. I'd be down in Melbourne. I'd be like going through people's <laughs> studios and stuff. I'd be like peeping in their windows. <laughs> and I'll find that weeping woman. I'm gonna find that weeping woman. Oh. Yeah. Dang. I bet you know it's back. So no harm done. Yeah. Leave us a comment for what you thought of this case, or have you actually been to National Gallery of Victoria and seen? The weaving woman there. Did you see the play, the little placard, place card, the place, place card, card, left that said <laughs> uh, maintenance ACT? <laughs> Would your Mate. first like reaction as that seeing ACT be like, ah oh, yes, the Australian Capital Territory <laughs> has taken this for maintenance? I love to hear you agree with me. That'd be fabulous. I love it when people agree with me. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram. We are on Insta. We have an Instagram. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also. 
click that little bell as well if you want any notifications. Yeah, we on found out that's the thing. Like, <laughs> YouTubers say it all the time. We were like, <laughs> but yes, the little bell thing makes a huge difference. Ding okay. that little bell. <laughs> Until next time, time stay, stay tuned. tuned.